X870 doesn't get cheaper than this. Because you can get the ASRock X870 Pro for just $200. $100. Or you can get the Wi-Fi variant for just $10 more. But okay, when a motherboard costs that little, there has to be some cut corners somewhere, right? Well, in a way that matters to you, the end user, not really. Starting with CPU power, you have 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, which is more than enough for literally everyone, especially with the two 8 pins for CPU power as well. And it's even rated for 8,000 mega transfer per second memory. So you can really use some high-end stuff with this motherboard. Then looking down to the PCE expansion, well, here's probably where it's the most cut down to save costs. You do still have a primary PCE Gen 5 slot for your graphics card, even if Gen 5 graphics cards aren't even a thing yet, and only one additional slot below that, which is a Gen 4x4 slot. Besides the much more important PCE slots here are, of course, your M.2 storage options. You do have three slots, with one of them being PC Gen 5, one being PC Gen 4, and the last one being just PC Gen 3, which, again, would be nice if there was two Gen 4 ones, like most x870 motherboards this generation, but again, on the realist side, you probably don't need the those kind of speeds anyway, and you'd get to save a buck by going for an older Gen 3 drive. The same can be said about the fact it only has four SATA connectors. Again, I wish it was more, but again, most people don't need more than that anyway, especially at this price point. However, PCIe lanes are pretty scarce to resource on this board, clearly, seeing how populating the second M.2 slot will outright disable the second PCIe slot, and if you use the first two SATA ports, then that Gen 3 M.2 slot will get downgraded to just two lanes. Again, nothing too bad, but the issue with this kind of stuff is that it just confusing, and for people who don't read the footnotes, then they're gonna be left wondering why some of the PC devices may not be working at all, or not working at the speeds that they were advertised. So I really hate that companies that made this kind of stuff more clear, but whatever. At least it didn't cheap out on the other internal connectors, seeing how you still get a total of seven various fan connectors, and after that, three addressable and one plain old fashioned RGB connector as well. Finally, moving down to the rear IO, it has always been well, very hit or miss on Hasbro Commodore boards. Right at the bat, it's insane that you get a whopping 12 USB Type-A boards here. Though what's slightly more disappointing is that just four of them are faster than Gen 2, and even then, they're just 5 gigabit per second. But then again, taking the realist stance, odds are you don't need that many high-speed USB Type-A ports anyway. And if you do want high speed, then how about the two, yes, two, 40 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports at the back as well. To wrap things up, you also have HDMI for integrated graphics, 2.5 gig Ethernet, that optional Wi-Fi 7 we talked about earlier, and well, unfortunately, you only get two audio jacks, but you do, thankfully, at least get optical spidiff. At least it uses the ALC1220 codec, rather than cheaping out and going for the step-down ALC897 one. Mean that overall, even someone like me, who's just cynical about everything, I can't really complain about this board, because while there's so many things that have been just cut to make it cheaper, it's things that literally no one will even miss. People don't need more than four SATA connectors, most people don't need the full array of audio jacks, most people don't need plenty of PCIe slots, pretty much the only thing I can complain about is the aesthetic. I don't want to bring race into this, but it is white, which obviously won't match with too many people's builds, and even then it has plenty of black elements still on it, while many other current gen white boards go the extra mile and colour in as many other parts of it as well. If that's a deal breaker for you, then fair enough, but if you're out there counting every single penny and just want a motherboard that has everything you need and nothing more, then hey, I don't think there's a better deal than this right now, so get it up on our Amazon and New York links which will be up in iCards and down in the video description below, where you'll also find our Patreon, because that is an even better deal than even this motherboard. Plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Bartosz Roker, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. But anyway, that's what it's, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.